Hi, I'm Ksenia and thank you so much for joining me for this series looking at Jupiter's transits through each house of the horoscope. It is lovely to have you with me. I especially want to welcome all the people who are viewing this who are new to astrology. I hope this video helps you learn more and understand more about how astrology operates and the effects of astrology in your life. And also welcome back to those of us who are a little bit more seasoned in our knowledge of astrology. It's a pleasure to have you here as well. Hopefully, if you are more seasoned in astrology, you'll be able to help out those who leave comments in the comments section looking for answers and, quest and asking questions. So thank you for helping and supporting me in that endeavor and to help make this a beautiful community where we can communicate and uplift one another on our journey to know more about astrology. So we're going to be looking at Jupiter transiting through the houses. But first, let's look a little bit about Jupiter itself as a planet. There's so much to know about Jupiter. What a fantastic planet and it's such a joy and a thrill and a delight to be talking about Jupiter, stepping into Jupiter energy because he is known as in astrology the great benefic, bringing benefit, bringing expansion, bringing growth, bringing abundance into our lives wherever he sits in the chart, in the natal chart. But as I said, in this instance, we're looking at transits and, and the benevolence that he brings where that's going to be felt and experienced more um, according to transits. But let's start by looking at Jupiter. Well, Jupiter is a magnetizer. If you think about Jupiter out there in the actual outer space, Jupiter energy draws things in. It's got this massive magnetis field for a start, and it also it attracts objects around it into its gravitational pull. So it's, it's this massive planet, and it is quite literally a magnetizer, draws things to it out there in space. And the same energy is represented by Jupiter uh, in astrology as well. So when it transits a house or a sign, and we're using whole sign astrology with this, where each sign represents a house, it will draw things to it of the nature of that sign or that house. It will magnetize those things, pull those things in and make them uh, manifest more in the life of the individual. And the life of the collective as well, I might add too. As I said, Jupiter is the biggest planet in the solar system and it is therefore very effectual. Jupiter uh, very nearly became a second sun in the formation of our solar system millions of years ago and would have entered into therefore a binary system with our, uh, our actual sun or maybe one of them might have gobbled the other up who knows but they uh jupiter didn't quite get there it didn't quite have the oomph that it took but nonetheless jupiter is massive and he functions very much um, in the nature of a, a benevolent sun in our chart bringing confidence um, and bringing uh, illumination to things and because of his mass his energy, his energetic output, as I said, he has this monstrous magnetosphere um, that reaches out into um, the zone of Saturn, actually. They, it crosses into Saturn's orbit. Um, and because of this influence of Jupiter that is so expansive, quite literally in the skies and figuratively in astrology as well, the effects of, Ju of Jupiter are far reaching and very, very influential. Jupiter is expansive in astrology as goes with the, the idea and the nature of um, as above, so below, and him being the biggest planet, the most expansive planet, his energy in our lives is very expansive as well. In fact, he is so big that you could fit 1,300 earth size balls <laughs> inside of Jupiter. 1,300, it's a phenomenal thought, difficult to get our head around, really. Not only that, you could actually fit every single other planet in the solar system into Jupiter all at once. Go figure, he's enormous. So he brings expansion with his transits and with his natal placement as well. He brings abundance as well. He brings enthusiasm. He brings opportunities. He brings, as I said before, confidence. He brings also a sense of morality to an area of our life wherever he's transiting. He brings a, a need for ethics to wherever he's transiting. And he brings a sense of adventure and, ooh, what could I experience now? What can this do for me? How can I utilize this? What, it, what can I learn about this? He brings that energy to the area of the chart that he's transiting as well. 
Jupiter rules being charitable, generosity, giving, and he will bring this character of benevolence into whatever area of your chart that he happens to be transiting. You will feel more benevolent, more charitable, in the, you know, and feel like giving to that area of your life in a, in greater capacity. Jupiter is also very forward looking. And so his transit to a certain area of our house will give us more of a forward looking approach to the themes of that house. He allows us, he's, he's actually a planet that connects to prophecy and he allows us to gain a glimpse of the potential of the future possibilities of a house. He gives us the chance to extend and expand beyond our current limits in a certain area or realm of life that, that is connected to the house in which he's transiting. One of my favorite mantras that I use frequently is um, I expand to meet my destiny. I, this is my mantra when I practice yoga and do all sorts of other things in life and I remind myself I can expand and become big enough to um, embrace the destiny that the universe has for me, the highest vibrational good that is represented in my chart. So if you're feeling limited or blocked in a certain area, certain realm of life, just wait till Jupiter gets to that, um, that section of your chart and watch the blossoming occur. Watch, watch yourself expand beyond the, the limits you perceived that were around you. The blockages, the restrictions in a certain area can be absolutely sort of pushed out. The boundaries are expanded for you to experience more blessing, more abundance, more prosperity in a certain area. How this works is that well, Jupiter has a connection to our visioning processes, our you know our dreaming. Like Jupiter in ancient astrology rules the sign of Pisces, and Pisces is all about our dreams and and you know daydreams, night dreams, all that sort of thing. So Jupiter has a connection to the governance of our visioning, of our dreams, of our imagination, and our intuition. So it's our intuition and our imaginative visioning processes when we sit on the couch on a, you know, a nice spring afternoon with a cup of, you know, Earl Grey tea and we're looking out the window dreaming about what we'd like our life to look like, who we want to be, how we'd really like it to work out for us. That begins the process of expansion. Because it's in those processes of trusting our intuition and tapping into our imagination and our visioning you know, processes that we begin an, a shift of energy within us. And that's when the old hermetic principle of as within, so without starts to work for us. When we change our inner being, then we start to see external circumstances change to reflect that shift in energy within us. And Jupiter does his work on that inner level. He is also an externally manifesting planet, but he begins by working on this inner level, creating a higher vibration for us through allowing us to feel more abundance, more joy, more optimism, more joviality. The word jovial comes from the word Jupiter, actually. And it's through this inner change in our levels of optimism and uh, abundance consciousness that then we begin to see the manifestation happen in reality and we start to see our outer circumstances change and Jupiter begins that process by when he transits a house by lifting our vibrational level inner in our inner world to be able to receive on the outer world. Now Jupiter is named after the ancient Roman god, uh, king of the gods actually in mythology and there's an association with Thor in Norse mythology, there's an association with um, Zeus in Greek mythology and there's an association with Marduk in the ancient Babylonian mythology as well. So that he has links to all those energies of being the, the supreme god or governor over all or, um, you know, the, the, the one top authority, top dog, so to speak. And because of that, he actually rules in astrology lawmakers, judges, legal systems, higher levels of knowledge, um, places of, of learning that are of that, that higher level you know um, universities and colleges he also governs things like religion and belief systems long distance travels not just short little trips but the big we're talking Jupiter his big big travels overseas or to other you know countries that are far away he governs other cultural practices and other cultural beliefs he, like Jupiter represents other cultures in general and he also is a representation of higher knowledge from the divine realms. And it's this that makes him the Lord of intuition, the angel on our shoulder, giving us wisdom and guidance in our journey. The guru, as he's known 
in Vedic astrology. Jupiter is referred to as guru and there's a very good reason for that because he gives this wisdom, he gives this knowledge. He is the the wise, you know, angel on our shoulder. Now this is a spring series uh, that I am preparing. It's spring in Australia when I'm launching this series. If you're watching it at different times of the year, it'll be a different season, obviously. But in Australia, it is spring at the moment, which I thought was a perfect time to be doing a series on Jupiter and his transits because spring is about growth. Spring is about the expansion, the, the, you know, the blossoming and very much the, the abundant nature of Jupiter represented in spring. But Jupiter actually rules the colors purple and orange. And as you can see, I'm wearing a purple cardigan with my spring attire here. Um, and there's purple flowers all over my dress. Also, if you look behind me, I've decorated part of my house with um, a lot of purple and orange. There's an orange door there and a purple painting and so on and so on, because I really want to channel the energy of Jupiter in my home. I myself am a very highly Jupiterian person. And so I really want to bring that energy in. And Jupiter governs these things. Jupiter rules the crystals lapis lazuli and malachite. According to the, the research that I have done, there's some varying opinions around that. But this is malachite. I don't have any lapis lazuli on me at the moment, but I will be getting more. Lapis lazuli... Um, was often used and possibly malachite as well in ancient Egyptian jewelry and tomb decorations and so it was con it was was attributed to the the pharaohs or not attributed to the pharaohs but it had connections to this leadership element in ancient Egypt so it was only the wealthy only the um, prosperous only the pharaohs and their families that were able to enjoy um, the luxuries of uh, lapis lazuli and malachite and of course, Jupiter has these associations with abundance and with wealth and with the lawgivers and leaders. Jupiter's day is Thursday. Now, those of you who are familiar with how the days of the week got their names will know that it's it comes from the Norse Thor's day. And we've already said Jupiter has an affiliation with Thor. Jupiter, um, Jupiter's day that he rules of the week is Thursday, Thor's day. Now, because of all these wonderful things that Jupiter governs, and we're going to talk about a few more of those in just a minute, but because he rules abundance, because he rules wealth, because he rules a certain type of leadership, that inspirational figure, that lawmaker, that religious leader, that spiritual leader, that divinely inspired leader, because Jupiter rules these things, Wherever Jupiter sits in your chart is where you're going to be able to channel and receive more abundance, more wealth, more um, opportunity, more good fortune, more prosperity. All these things that Jupiter rules will come into the house where your Jupiter sits in the natal chart. But that's a series for another day when we look at Jupiter through the houses in the natal chart. We're looking at transiting Jupiter in this series. So a bit more about the things that Jupiter rules. Let me read this list to you. He rules children. He rules wealth. He rules belief systems. He rules the blood. He rules the veins. He also rules the hips and the ability to move forward in life is obviously connected to our ability to utilize our hips. So Jupiter also governs our capacity and our ability to move forward in life as well. Jupiter rules everything from... Uh, of our, sort of accommodation of a very high level um, or public buildings of a very high level, universities, but things like castles, cathedrals, casinos are all ruled by Jupiter. Um, and not that casinos are of a high level, but there is the element of luck and wealth and prosperity that's sort of um, associated with casinos that gives Jupiter the rulership of casinos. But the belief systems around cathedrals and ashrams and the buildings that govern um, our belief systems or that connect with our belief systems. Jupiter rules those as well as the high level um, places where we reside, castles and, um, you know, um, estates and things like that of a, a very high nature, high caliber. He rules etiquette. He rules manners. 
In a woman's chart, Jupiter rules husbands and um, generally he rules beautiful things like joy and happiness. If we want to know where we can feel the most joy and happiness in life, look to where your Jupiter sits in your natal chart or where Jupiter's transiting. You know you'll be able to generate more joy in that area, more happiness. Jupiter rules devotion, being devoted to something or someone. At a perhaps not so pleasant level, Jupiter rules obesity. He is, after all, the largest planet in the solar system. He's big. Um, and if you have Jupiter placed in the first house, he can usually, in the natal chart, he can make you taller than average, but you've got to watch your weight in later age <laughs> because you can tend to spread out and become very Jupiter-like in the way you look, very round in the middle. In fact, Jupiter as a planet bulges in the middle due to his rotation speed and gravitational pull and all that sort of thing that affects um, the shape of Jupiter and he bulges out in the middle so when we have Jupiter in the first house we do have to be very careful of bulging out in the middle at some point in life hence I have to watch what I eat. <laughs> So Jupiter rules beautiful things as well, like benevolence, philanthropy, get my words out, and prayer. So these are glorious things that Jupiter rules. And these are only a few of the areas of life that you might notice Jupiter influencing through his transits or through your natal chart placement as well. There's, a, there's just masses of things as is the, you know, befitting to the nature of a very big planet. There's a very big list of things that Jupiter governs in our lives, but there's just a few. Now, Jupiter is at his most powerful in fire and water signs. So when he's in the earth signs or the air signs, it's not that he doesn't bring you know, beneficial results. He's just a little bit lackluster. He doesn't have the oomph. He doesn't have the, you know, ta-da kind of capacity that he would in water or fire signs. He's just a little bit ta-da, you know. The energy is not quite the same, not quite as full. He is especially strong in Sagittarius, which he rules, Pisces, which is the other sign that he rules in traditional astrology, ancient astrology. And he is especially strong where he is exalted in the sign of Cancer. So if you are experiencing a transit of Jupiter to Pisces, Sagittarius or Cancer at some time in life, then you're going to experience uh, more, more of his benevolence in a very ta-da kind of way um, because of the strength of Jupiter in these signs. Jupiter has a natural affiliation with the ninth house, the most prosperous, not prosperous, the most lucky house in astrology, the most blessed house in astrology, the ninth house, and Jupiter has a natural affiliation to that house. He also has a natural affiliation to the 12th house, which is interestingly enough, one of the malefic houses in Vedic astrology. But Jupiter has an affiliation to that because of his governance of the sign Pisces, which has all this 12th house energy. Um, so Jupiter is very comfortable when he's in the 12th house or the 9th house. But Jupiter is actually, um, has his strongest directional strength and greatest effect in either the first house, particularly the first house. That's where Jupiter has his greatest directional strength or gives the, the strongest influence for good. Um, but it, the, there is also a strong influence of Jupiter when he's in the 10th house. This is where Jupiter does his best work in the first house or the 10th house. So if you're experiencing that by transit as well, you're going to experience a lot more of the blessing, especially if you happen to have Sagittarius, Pisces or Cancer as your first or 10th house and Jupiter's transiting there. Hang on to your hats, it's going to be fun. <laughs> Now, wherever Jupiter is transiting is where you can actually contribute most to society. And this is because Jupiter is charitable. Jupiter is generous. Jupiter is a philanthropist. Jupiter is a, a bene benefic. He brings benefits. So you yourself can be these energies or give these energies to the world and, and your role on the planet. So, you know, Jupiter might be transiting, for example, the fifth house. So you can give your um, your benefit, your charity, your philanthropy to children because that is where um, the energy is of benevolence and generosity is being directed by transit. Also consider that in your natal placement of Jupiter as well, where you can be the most generous and give um, you know, in a very benevolent philanthropic way wherever Jupiter sits in your natal chart also. So without further ado, Let's go in now and have a look at where Jupiter is transiting and how it might affect you. So how do we find out if Jupiter is transiting through our eighth house? 
Well, firstly, we need to know what sign Jupiter is currently transiting through as we're watching this video. So whenever you happen to be watching this video, you can go to planetwatcher.com and it will tell you what sign Jupiter is currently transiting. And of course, in whole sign astrology, every sign represents a house and therefore you can figure out in which house your Jupiter, the current transiting Jupiter is going through. And we're looking for the eighth house. So basically, uh, we're looking for Jupiter being eight houses from the rising sign. So in this example, we've got Scorpio here that has Jupiter in it. And eight houses from back from Scorpio is Aries. So Aries would be the rising sign when we have Jupiter and Scorpio. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So essentially, you'll need to know where Jupiter is, you'll need to know where that falls in your chart, and then you can calculate which one of these videos you can watch that will correlate to where you're at currently in life. But if you happen to have Jupiter in the eighth house, then this is the video for you. This is a very spiritual transit. This is the eighth house is a water house. It is a very spiritualized house. It's very connected to other realms, connected to the divine. So you're going to feel actually quite at home in the world during this spiritual transit. Jupiter, this spiritual planet, planet of the divine, coming into a spiritual house means, yeah, just things feel like they flow for you. Spiritually, you are where you're meant to be. You're on the money. We can be very connected to others during this time. It's a house of intimacy after all. <laughs> um, but we're also enthralled by life experience. We're passionate about experiencing life, sinking our teeth into life, sucking out the marrow of life, as Walt Whitman in his poem said. And we're doing this without being obsessed about it, being paranoid about it, or being you know, over the top about it. We're just doing it in a natural, easy way, enjoying life, carpe diem, and totally being there without being over the top. This is also a house of desire and we are with this transit liberated from our desires and our desire nature. They don't have hold over us anymore. It's kind of not that Jupiter is a liberating freeing planet but in this sense that's exactly the energy that we're receiving from him. Where Scorpio gets very intense about things, not just Scorpio energy, sorry, eighth house energy gets very intense about things, very passionate about things, very, you know, it's, it's very pent up about things and wants, it's passionate. And that can be great if we want to achieve stuff in life. We really got the, the oomph, the energy to do so. But sometimes it can take us down a bit of a dark road where we're just so passionate about stuff that we lose perspective on reality. In this eighth house realm, now with Jupiter transiting here, we're not so hung up about things anymore. We're, we're lighter, we're more buoyant, we're more positive and upbeat. We're not so hung up or upset about anything in our external reality because we've got this spiritual backstop going on within us, which is very nice. We're feeling more trusting than usual, more free than usual. Uh, we're probably feeling more resourceful than usual. Like we can create solutions to crisis and situations and, and problems very easily. Like, you know, the universe has got our back. We're going to sort this out. I can handle this. That's Jupiter energy in the eighth house. Um, and, you know, we're able to be because we feel held, because we feel like the universe is holding space for us we're actually able to be a bit more vulnerable, especially in our intimate relationships where we can be more real, more true. This is a house of truth and seeking truth. And so we're going to actually be able to enact that and be that in the world and in our intimate experiences and true to ourselves. It's quite lovely. The eighth house is a house where we use control as a mechanism to, to avoid pain and suffering. If I can control a situation, if I can manage a situation, then I won't suffer. Well, that always doesn't play out in reality. That sorry, that often doesn't play out in reality. Where you know, when we're controlling things too much, things get out of control and we get frustrated and ah. Uh. But with Jupiter here, the energy is very different. We actually start to experience resilience when things are out of control. We're like, no worries, everything's fine. I'm going to handle this. I can sort this out. Not a problem. And it's a far more flowing, free, less stuck energy. Remember, the eighth house is correlated to Scorpio, which is a fixed sign. So it's a far less stuck, fixed energy. And it's much more flowing now with Jupiter being in this uh, realm of the chart. 
Of course, anything 8th house can be amplified by Jupiter's presence here as well. And in this sense, the benevolence of Jupiter means an amplification of intimacy and connection and depth with our loved ones, with our nearest and dearest, essentially. Of course, that's going to be wonderful if we're married or if we're in an intimate relationship or we have some deep connections with somebody that really means something to us. We're going to be able to do this with a lot more power and dignity. No, no loss of pride, no loss of, of sense of self-power through our vulnerable, intimate connections um, at this time for this year. And that can be uh, very invigorating and empowering for a lot of people who need that. It's more of an energy of I want to share with you, I want to be, you know, open to you, rather than I want to possess you, I want to own you, which can often be seen by the eighth house energy. We're sort of keen now, this is the house of community resources, and we're keen now on what can I do that makes everybody benefit, rather than, you know, the needs of the self I must have, you know. Um, it's now far more benevolent because of Jupiter's presence there. This is also the house of unearned wealth. So, you know, legacies, inheritances, tax refunds, wills, you know, you name it, insurance payouts, you know. So there's a lot of potential with, with the planet of wealth moving in here for gainfulness in those areas, for sort of getting payouts, joint finances do very well under this energy, getting, you know, being able to claim an insurance claim and see some benefit come from that. So in that sense, you can do very well financially under this transit this year as well. Also, loans and grants are seen from this house and you can um, actually receive loans and grants much more easily now. So if you've been needing a loan to go buy a house or to get upgrade your car or whatever you need it for, it's a good year to do it when you've got Jupiter transiting the eighth house. Not only can you receive well this way, but you can also make money through your partner's um, finances and resources as well. So maybe your partner has an insurance policy and you benefit from it this this year of your life in some way. Uh, maybe your partner buys a lottery ticket and boof, you know, you benefit from his winning the lottery. So it's through the money that is made by a, a particularly intimate partner in your life that you can benefit under this transit also. Um, it's a sexual house in Western astrology, not in the Vedic system, but in the Western system it is. And in that sense, you know, when we're looking at this through the lens of the Western astrology eyes, we will talk about Hindu astrology and how it works here a little later. Um, it can give a lot more positive sexual experiences, a lot more fun, a lot more tantra, a lot more um, depth, because Jupiter is a very deep planet, as we know, to sexual experiences. In fact, we might find sex becomes more spiritual now, you know, after orgasm, we might be like, I just want to pray with you, honey. Let's just pray together. Oh, I'm just feeling so alive and spiritually, you know, that kind of zone. That can be a thing. Um, in fact, sex becomes a bit more high minded and a bit more spiritual. And you're not just connecting for a bit of a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. You're connecting now in that way to be able to go deep with the partner, to be fully real and fully seen and fully true um, with, with whoever your intimate partner is. You want to know them fully their personality what makes them tick um how they how they function you want to know their as well as their sexual needs and desires and behaviors and you want them to know you in that way as well and it's so it goes much much deeper now sex goes much deeper than just the surface event it becomes a beautiful pure experience where you can actually use it as a as a leapfrog or a resource to to actually enter into the divine absolutely fabulous this is an occult house, so anything, occult, mystical, esoteric, um, anything that's sort of very otherworldly, conspiracy theories, things like that might hold a great deal of interest for you now. You might get into astrology, you might study shamanism, you might uh, immerse yourself in some kind of a alternative spiritual practice even that we could see here um, and certainly you know, dive deep into any of those alternative realms. But interaction with psychics, astrologers, uh, spiritual kind of keepers of hidden wisdom and, and knowledge, you know, you'll be wanting to reach out and grab more of those now. Watching more videos on or documentaries on Gaia TV or something, or um, perhaps, you know, doing some past life regression work or some shamanic therapy sessions would be happening under this transit and be very beneficial under this transit. You would get more out of it now too because this is enhanced in you, this energy of alternative 
practices of a spiritualized nature are going to be very uh, go very deep with you and and empower you more so than usual it's a very karmic house now it's not a house of past lives but it is a house of our deepest traumas and often our deepest traumas come from past life conditionings or past life experiences that have been printed on our psyche and the way we heal those things is through the eighth house hence the benefit of Jupiter being here with doing some psychotherapy, doing some past life regression work, doing some shamanic healing work just cannot be understated. Because when Jupiter goes through here, we free ourselves from deep psychological complexes, from fears, from phobias. We want to dig deeper to know where these things have come from in our life and find the solution, find the answer. When we get that light bulb moment, aha, I understand why I do what I do, then there's a liberation that occurs with that. And that's what Jupiter's transit here will do for us in terms of liberating. So it's a brilliant year for any type of therapy. Now that can be whatever you like, art therapy, music therapy, dance therapy. If kickboxing's your therapy, great. If yoga's your therapy, fantastic. If you like to journal and write things out, you know, and just sort of scribble, scribble, scribble and see what words pour out on the page. If this is the kind of thing that, that is therapy to you, then dive deep in with it this year. Do it regularly, daily, all the time, because you're going to get so much out of this year um, that's really going to be therapeutic and cathartic for you and healing of deep soul wounds, often from past lifetimes. And speaking of past lifetimes, this is a house of death and the afterlife. You might find you'd be very comfortable with your mortality now. You might find that, you know, the idea of death isn't quite so scary anymore. And certainly when I had Jupiter transit through, transit through my eighth house, I stopped being scared of death. I was raised to, you know, it was kind of contradictory and I don't want to go too much down this controversial path, but... I was raised to you know, think that it was better to be with Jesus in heaven than to be here on earth. And yet in those circles, everyone was just horrified if someone died, mortified, oh, weeping, wailing, and oh, it's so sad, somebody's died. And I'm like, but surely, you know, if, if it's better to be with Jesus in heaven and you, they, you, know, you believe that that's where they've gone, then we should be happy, you know? It just didn't add up. Well, under this transit, when I had um, Jupiter transit my eighth house, I suddenly, any fear of death, any um, apprehension about, oh, where am I going to go when I die? I'm going to go to hell or am I going to go to heaven? You know, and what, you know, that just vanished and my belief systems changed, which caused that. But Jupiter through the eighth house was one of the big leverages that, um, that altered my perspective on death and what happens after life in this particular incarnation on this body. And uh, yeah, I've been in a state of liberation with that ever since. No fear, no, you know, I just don't get why people grieve death, which is just another part of life, because we then emerge into the afterlife. In fact, Jupiter through the eighth house can give us a lot um, of desire to explore these topics, to explore reincarnation. What is, you know, what can we expect in the afterlife? What has been written about the afterlife, perhaps in ancient texts or with people who have died on the operating table and come back to life? And we get very intrigued by these themes and we do a lot of digging deep and explorative work on the ideas of death, reincarnation and afterlife. Essentially, we have a more optimistic view of these things now, more positive, more Jupiterian view of the big picture of life, incarnation to incarnation. We also know that our intuition will get stronger under this transit as well. And whenever we intuit something, it'll come peacefully, not with sort of sitting there going, I just wish I knew the answer. What's the answer? Come on. Uh, now the answer just comes, you know, you'll get a goosebump sensation when somebody says something to you like, aha, there's my answer right there. Thank you, Jupiter. You know, our intuition is on fire under this transit as well. Now, in Hindu astrology, when Jupiter is transiting the eighth house, he's also making an aspect to the second house, and he's making an aspect to the fourth house, and an aspect to the twelfth house. So, what does this mean? Well, with the aspect to the twelfth house, it means that it's a year of growth. A year of spiritual development for your soul. Uh, you probably might find you get a lot of bargains as well. Um, we can do some bargain shopping under this particular energy and come out, you know, winning on top. Uh, we might enjoy sex a lot more. This is the house in Vedic astrology of bed pleasures um, and sexual activity. Not the eighth house, but the um, in Vedic astrology. 
but the 12th house. So from, for that reason, you might be enjoying more sex, although in Western astrology, you'll be enjoying it because of its 8th house connotation. Um, so lots more uh, sex to enjoy, um, travel to foreign countries that can sort of increase, more options to travel, more chances to tap out, tap, chances to enjoy life, chances to... Um, you know, have retreats, go to day spas, go get a massage, go and, you know, go to a fantasy party or something. Just chances to sort of be uh, out of mundane, ordinary reality increase. And the aspect here to the second house by opposition is going to increase your luck in resources and money. Wealth might expand for you under this energy and you might also experience greater benefits through education as well and learning something new too. The aspect to the fourth house that Jupiter makes through this transit means you know you might move home. Jupiter, this is the house of home and uh, Jupiter can cause you to sort of change where you live or you might get a new home or you might renovate your old home and increase and expand its size. Jupiter is to expand after all. Um, you might get a new car. Um, also, this is a house of transportation and transportational vehicles. So in that sense, you might get a new car. If you're lucky and you're wealthy, you might get a new plane <laughs> or something like that. Um, obviously, that's not for everybody. But the relationships with your mother figures or maternal figures and older women can also be enhanced this year as well because of this aspect to the fourth house of mother and maternal energy. So in that sense, benefit in those realms too. Well, thanks for joining me for this video where we took a peek at Jupiter moving through the eighth house. I hope this has been supportive for your journey and do catch me next week when we take a look at Jupiter through the ninth house.